Hello everyone. So today's video is regarding oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. This is a very brief lecture. So we'll be completing what is oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, what is its relevance, why it is sigmoid shape, and what are different factors influencing it. Okay. If you you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. So oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. So this is oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve in which on x-axis there is partial pressure of oxygen and on y-axis there is oxygen saturated hemoglobin. Okay, so the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen. So basically, uh, how with partial pressure of oxygen, the change in partial pressure of oxygen, how the hemoglobin saturation changes. That is this curve about. Okay, if you see the shape of curve, this is almost S shaped. This is called sigmoid shape. Okay, so what we have to understand in this graph is basically at various PO2 level, how the hemoglobin saturation percentage changes. For example, let us concentrate. So it's around 50. Uh, this is 50, right? This is 50. So 50% 50 hemoglobin saturation around at 30 mmHg or less than that okay if you see at 40 mmHg this is around 75 percent 75 percent hemoglobin saturated at 40 mmHg okay let's say uh, 100 mmHg so at 100 mmHg it's around 98 or 97 percent hemoglobin saturation here why we are reading this curve you should understand that why because uh, if we see how basically oxygen transport occur in our body. So at tissue level, the PO2 falls from 100 mmHg to 40 mmHg. Okay. And what we need there? We need their oxygen supply from hemoglobin. Okay. So when from 100 mmHg, it fall to 40 mmHg at tissue level, there occurs less hemoglobin saturation. What that mean? That oxygen is liberated from HbO2 to tissues. That's why we need unloading of oxygen here at less PO2. And when at lungs level, at basically alveoli level, when the PO2 again changes to 100 mmHg, there should be oxygen loading from lungs so that from alveoli we can get extra oxygen molecules and it can bound to hemoglobin. So more saturation we need. That's why we have more saturation at more PO2. Okay. And obviously this we need. And uh, this basically makes a mechanism how the oxygen transport from uh, alveoli to blood and hair from blood to tissues. Are you getting me? Uh, we'll be making video on oxygen transport. It will be very clear then. But here you should know what is oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve and what is its relevance. Okay. So if you see here from 40 mmHg. So at 40 mmHg, it's 75% saturated. At 100 mmHg, it's 97 or around 100% saturated. So with increase in PO2, the oxygen saturation increases. Okay. Now why it's sigmoid shape? Okay. Why it's sigmoid shape? So it, it's increasing linearly till here. Okay. So as basically it reaches at this level, it suddenly exponentially changes the saturation of hemoglobin. Why it's so? Because when hemoglobin having four heme group, it combine with one oxygen and form HB4O2. Okay. So basically combination of one oxygen increases the affinity for second. And this is more fast process than the first one. And as the second oxygen combine, it increases affinity for third one. And hence next one. Okay. So basically this process, this pro the first oxygen combination is slow than the others so respectively they basically are faster processes now why it's so let's see so why basically hemoglobin affinity for first oxygen and last oxygen differs so basically combination of one molecule of oxygen it basically increase affinity for other three why it occur let's see so iron this this is a hemoglobin in which iron is bound with four heme group and four polypeptide chains and they are arranged like this okay so as you can see there are polypeptide chains uh, which are blue in color these are arranged below 
and the heme group and iron group is basically bound to histidine okay histidine uh, bond so this iron histidine in bond making it making it in uh, it is basically stretching the iron upward and making it in tensed configuration so iron histidine bond is under strain in deoxyhemoglobin so when there is no oxygen deoxyhemoglobin formed so this is deoxyhemoglobin when iron is stretched upward okay so this tensed tensed configuration this strain is transmitted to alpha beta chain also and to rest of hemoglobin molecule so the shape of hemoglobin is tensed here this is called tensed configuration it inhibit sterically the approach of oxygen why because this is in three dimensional plane this are this iron is uh, basically stretched upward by histidine so the oxygen molecule is not able to bind here so the it inhibit approach of oxygen okay then what happens so the, basically we have low affinity for oxygen here so what happens as the oxygen combines as one molecule of oxygen combine it the iron moves basically downward and this become flat fine so which increases the affinity for other one the other uh, oxygen molecule and this is called relaxed state okay so the this hemoglobin has more affinity for the second one and basically hemoglobin molecule this has oxygen affinity 150 fold greater than the tensed configuration so basically the affinity for next molecule increases which is basically cause of sigmoid shape of this curve is basically change of tensed configuration to relaxed configuration so till now we have covered uh, what is oxyhemoglobin curve why it sigmoid shape okay now there are various factors which can shift this curve toward right side that is this one and toward left side that is shift to left okay now basically what that mean for example this is normal curve right and this is the shift to left okay so 40 m at 40 mm at gpo2 partial pressure of oxygen we have around 75% uh, oxygen saturation of hemoglobin right now if the curve is shift to right as you can see at same po2 the oxygen hemoglobin saturation decreases what that mean that hemoglobin is now less saturated with oxygen that means oxygen is supplied to tissues so that is unloading of oxygen here right so where we need unloading of oxygen and where at which condition we need supply of oxygen so what are the conditions which shifted to right side so increased co2 concentration for example at tissue level we, because of metabolism we release co2 okay so at that condition we need oxygen now so unloading of oxygen should be there at tissue level wherever we have high co2 concentration right so that's why the curve shift to right so that oxygen can be supplied obviously whenever we have high co2 concentration we will have less ph okay so as you can see here that if from 7.4 the ph come to less 7.2 so the curve shift to right fine 2 3 dpg is nothing but a metabolic product of uh, glucose uh, oxidation so 2 3 dpg diphosphoglycic acid uh, so uh, whenever we have 2 3 dpg more because of metabolism the curve shift to right whenever we have high temperature so as compared as we are increasing temperature the curve is shifting rightward fine so these are the condition which shift the curve to right side now there are various conditions which shift the curve to left side so obviously vice versa conditions of all those so decreased co2 concentration so decreased co2 means at alveoli level at lung level we have less co2 and high oxygen concentration right so we need shift the curve to left side so that we can load oxygen more the hb can load more, more oxygen at alveoli level so decreased co2 concentration at alveoli level there is more hemoglobin saturation okay at same po2 fine so that we can the oxygen can be supplied to hemoglobin more and obviously there is high ph 2 3 dpg is less okay less temperature decreased temperature so the curve if the temperature decreases curve shift to left okay and there are two more things as compared to the shift to right there is hemoglobin f that is called fetal hemoglobin we have covered in a video that all varieties of hemoglobin and uh, so we know that fetal hemoglobin is having high affinity for oxygen as compared to hba 
which is our hemoglobin. So fetal hemoglobin have high affinity. What that mean? The curve will be shift to left. So more loading of oxygen, right? So the oxygen will be less supplied to tissues if we have HBF. The same for applied for myoglobin, which is nothing but basically heme uh, part of muscles. Okay. So whenever we have myoglobin, the shift curve to the curve shift to left. Okay. So these are the conditions which shift the curve to left sides. So in this video, we have covered oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, why uh, it is sigmoid shape and what are bases behind it and what are various factors which can shift this curve to any directions and what is basically physiological significance of that, right? So that's all. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel if you like my videos. Thank you.